Hello, I'm Dr. Jack Adrian of Cairo Center, and I thought today it would be interesting to share with those of you who are also interested the anatomy of the lumbar spine in a severe disc bulge as it appears on an MRI, a test that's also known as magnetic resonance imaging. An MRI is an extremely valuable tool in that unlike an x-ray that shows mostly bony aspects of the spine, an MRI can actually show the majority of the soft tissue components, of course, which an x-ray cannot do. This is quite helpful in the detection and diagnosis of spinal disc challenges, as well as a host of other diseases and conditions. Now, only a relatively small number of patients actually require an MRI, and an MRI, is, as it relates to the spine, is generally reserved for those individuals experiencing very severe disc pain, or in those cases where some questions still exist after standard tests fail to provide an answer, in order to arrive at a more accurate diagnosis. So this is an MRI of a 51-year-old male. We have his name covered for privacy purposes, of course. And this individual recently sought our help for neuropathic pain and burning in both of his legs and feet that's been going on for approximately five years. He has a history of a previous lower back injury and has had surgery on two separate occasions on his feet and legs to try to find a way to relieve his neuropathy pain. But unfortunately, this MRI shows that those surgeries were pretty much in vain as it's very evident that he has a bad disc that is compressing his spinal cord, most likely referring his neuropathic symptoms into his feet and legs. In other words, even though he has pain in the lower extremities, the pain is not being caused by anything in his lower extremities, but rather coming down from his back and traveling into his nerves to his legs. So getting into our MRI itself, this is the front of the body and this is the back. This is the meaty uh, muscle tissue of the back. These bones here are what's called spinous processes. They are actually the bones that you can reach around and run your hand up the midline of your back and feel sticking out uh, backwards. Uh, these blocks of bone, these are the movable vertebral bodies and between each of them you'll see that there is a spinal disc which is a which under normal circumstances provides shock absorption against the effects of gravity, as well as providing a spacing mechanism between the vertebrae themselves in order that the nerves can exit the spinal cord and emit from the cord and reach out into the body with their mental impulses. Now, this white space coming here to the left of the cursor is actually the spinal cord that's coming down from the brain and it extends all the way down uh, into and through the sacrum before it emits into the lumbar plexus that forms the sciatic nerve and other nerves that power the muscles of your legs and provide sensory input back to the brain for walking and balance and so forth. You will also note here in the upper spine how the discs are very flush. These discs are very flush with the backs of the vertebrae. And this is what we would consider a normal and healthy disc. You will see a fairly whitish color or a light gray color in here. And this is an indication that these discs have proper hydration in fluid content in order to provide the disc with shock absorbing capabilities that the overall spine needs to protect itself from trauma and gravity. However, if you will look here at the bottom, you will notice two discs that don't look like the ones at the top. They have lost their normal whitish color, or at least most of it, and have turned more or less a darker color here on this MRI. Now these discs have lost their shock absorbing fluids through, de through dehydration and are in various stages of decay and degeneration. Now not so strangely, you will see here on this very bottom disc that it has a huge bulge that's coming out from under the vertebrae. And in this particular individual's case, it's actually applying pressure directly to the cord. You can see how the bulge is actually indenting the spinal cord. And this is in all likelihood the cause of this individual's neuropathic pain. You'll see that unlike the disc above, the back sides of the disc are not flush with the vertebrae, but rather the bulge is sticking outward into the, uh, into the, the spinal cord canal. Now, this was showing that this individual's neuropathic pain in his legs and feet was 
probably not coming from something wrong in his legs and feet, but rather from compression of his spinal cord. And this is known as compressive or mechanical neuropathy. Other names for this include radiculitis or sciatica of the, of the legs. And it's much, like, it's much like a hose that is hooked up to the spigot on the side of your house. The water can get through the hose, but if you step on the hose, the flow of fluids uh, weakens and diminishes. And this is pretty much what happens here. This big bulge is acting like the foot that's, that's tromping down on the hose and preventing the flow of neural impulses into the legs properly and therefore causing the neuropathic symptoms this individual is experiencing. Now, we agreed upon, this patient and I, upon a non-surgical disc decompression therapy to see if it was still possible after five years to retract the bulging disc, back off the cord, and get it to stay there in order to provide him the best chance of a non-surgical resolution for his challenge. Because he had already had so much surgery without getting any results at all, he was very much in favor of anything non-surgical that could possibly help him. And of course, like everyone, he knows people who have gone through spinal surgery who have experienced both success and failure, meaning there is never any guarantee. So he wanted to try everything he possibly could to avoid surgery and utilize that option only as a last resort. And of course, uh, his thinking is quite clear about that. Now, at the time of this filming, this individual is still involved in his treatment program here at Cairo Center. And we're happy to report that after five years of severe pain in his feet and legs, along with two surgeries that offered him no results whatever, that now just into a very few decompression uh, treatments here in our office, his pain is now significantly reduced, and you can assume he's a very happy camper about that, and we're looking very much forward to seeing if we can't bring him to total resolution of his symptoms. So this brings to an end our little one-on-one -on -one class about reviewing just some of the highlights that we look for in reviewing an MRI with a patient. And if you are someone who may also be having a spinal disc challenge, either in your back or your neck, I invite you to give me a call for a complimentary conference where you and I can sit down together and discuss your concerns and see if we here at Cairo Center may be able to come up for a solution for your challenge as well. Once again, from Cairo Center, I'm Dr. Jack Adrian. I certainly hope you found this uh, presentation to be both interesting and informative, and I, uh, I thank you for watching.